If you have ever observed a skull of a crocodile, let's say, have you ever noticed that there are openings on their skull? And what are they exactly? That leads us to today's topic, temporal fenestry. The temporal fenestra is an anatomical feature of the amniotic skull, characterized by bilaterally symmetrical holes in the temporal bone. Depending on the lineage of a given animal, two, one, or no pairs of temporal fenestrae may be present. Because different groups of animals have different number of temporal fenestrae on their skull, we classify them according to the number of openings. For animals belong to anapsida, there is no opening on their skull. And for animals like us, mammals, we belong to a group called synapsida, meaning there is one low opening on our skull. And for other animals, which have two openings on their skulls, they are classified as diapsidas. There is a special group of diapsidas that later lose their lower temporal fenestra, and this new group is classified as eurapsida, meaning they have only one high opening on their skull. Wait, wait a second here. When we go back to the definition of temporal fenestra, we found out that it only exists on amnoid skull. In other words, it means that the animals that are not amnoid do not have the openings on their skulls. So, where does those openings come from? It first appeared by accident. Scientists suspect that formation of fenestries may be due to embryological failure to close sutures. However, this alteration provides selective advantage to this individual and allows this trait to remain in the population and further develop. Use your imagination. When openings appear on a skull, the skull would become higher and form a dome shape. Correct? Doming of reptile skull compared to their ancestors allow their jaw joint to move inward and create greater torque on the lower jaw. This helps them exert higher biting pressure when attacking. Moreover, opening sutures where jaw adductors attached allow for the expansion of the jaw adductors through time and provided low angle attachment via the fenestral rim crucial to tendon mineralization. Long story short, temporal fenestry allows their bones to grow stronger and thus increase their predatory ability. As we all know, feeding is of primary importance among animals. The more food you get, the more likely you are going to survive and pass your genes to the next generation. In fact, temporal fenestry is usually used as a marker to draw up the evolutionary tree. And here is one example. As we mentioned earlier, we humans belong to synapsida. So do we have an opening on our skull? The answer is no. As time progressed, dynapsids and synapsids temporal fenestry became more modified. Mammals possess no fenestral opening in the skull as the trait has been modified. They do still have the temporal orbit and the temporal muscles. It is a hole in the head and is situated to the rear of the orbit behind the eye. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, please give a like or subscribe to my channel. I shall see you in our next videos. Thanks. Bye.